welcome to this uh, AppCenter and BDD and Xamarin um, session. So what we are going to be doing is adding a screen to Xamarin form application. Then we are going to add a test to test that behavior. And then we're going to send that to AppCenter and see what AppCenter can do uh, for us. I, uh, I must have been on mute a little uh, a while ago. I got too many mute buttons, uh, but I was saying that um, the uh, Japanese, uh, Microsoft Japan, and, um, uh, and uh, the government, I suppose, uh, just like we, we've been helping them to build the Japanese COVID-19 application in Xamarin Forms. Uh, that's going to be uh, in news pretty, pretty soon. And the Japanese national television just uh, interviewed us for this uh, opportunity. So we'll be live on, well, not live, but uh, well, uh, on Japanese national TV uh, about that event pretty soon. Anyway, back to Xamarin. So in this application, we're going to start by adding a page. So um, to do that, you go to your solution and we're just going to add new item. And that is going to be a content page and we're going to call it a button count page. Why not? Page. Button count page. Excellent. That's going to create a nice little page here. Uh, let's see if I can build that so that then after I can add the uh, um, uh, live. Sorry, the hot reload. The reason why I'm saying live reload is Xamarin had another go at creating a hot reload before called live reload. Then it didn't work and they just. Um, yeah, well, did it again. New click on page. What have I done? Um, click. Button count page, wrong one. Let me just delete that. And add a new item. Again, that was content page. Ah, click on page would be better. And then I can just save that and I can potentially read that like that. And I'm going to get my visor view. Here we go. That is building. That should be deploying pretty soon, hopefully. Let's say yes. I'm just deploying this application to our phone so we can build the UI in real time as we do because it's more fun. Uh, while I keep a tab on the comments, I'm definitely not on mute. I'm sharing the right screen. Uh, I was saying a bit earlier that usually those, uh, but I was likely on mute, but those engagements are usually um, uh, done uh, face to face and that is we use Team all the time. Team Live is the first time we're using it, so it was a little bit clunky. Cool, excellent. So this is a form application. We uh, were on the main page here, which just says basically, hey, go to click on test or uh, go to uh, entry label test, right? Entry, uh, entry to label, click on test. So if I go back here, that's exactly what it is. Uh, let me put that back here and uh, expand it a bit like that. And that will be a bit nicer and fatter. There we go. So uh, let's say that when I go to the click count test, that's precisely what I do. It says um, if we go to the main page, uh, main page, it will say, yeah, please go to this page. So let's go to that page. Indeed, go to the definition. And that is finding that for us. Welcome to Xamarin Form. So in theory, if I remove all that and save, that should remove this label. Yes, it did. Excellent. Theory uh, worked really, really well. Uh, everybody can hear me, right? Yep. If you can't hear me, please put a comment somewhere. But I hope you can hear me. Right. I, I am, and you know what? I'm going to make an announcement. Can you hear me? Uh, and if anyone, anyone, please reply to this message and say, yes, I can hear you. Ah, two. Uh, does the other user need to know? No, so uh, up, up, up. So that was done. No. 
Well, I take that everything is fine then. All right. Well, let's keep going. I'm going to uh, make um, these uh, 220 is fine. You should be able to see it, I believe. Um, let's uh, add a couple of bits. First of all, we are going to put a title to the page. The reason why that is going to allow us to know that we are on this page when we will write our test, we'll say, hey, what page are we on? And we're going to use this title um, um, uh, property for that. And let's call it uh, click count. Click count. Okay, click count. Okay, so that should reflect the click count here. See, it happened. Let's write that as a title. Then uh, we are going to have uh, add the stack layout. Stack. I'm lazy, so I'm hoping for IntelliSense to kick in. Stack layout, fantastic. Uh, and on the stack layout, uh, let's see the vertical options are going to be center. So everything is nice and centered. Uh, and that should be uh, all right. Yep. And then we're going to add a label. Label. A label is going to say, um, so. Here, yeah, the reason why I'm using X name, when you do X name, that allows uh, the code behind that part here to know about uh, a component. So, uh, for instance, uh, I'm going to name this component maybe click count label, right? So, if I go here, I go click count label, not found. Wait for it. I am going to go back to my page, click. Uh, no, sorry, man, click on page here. Yeah, let's put it there. Uh, let's click count label. And if I save that now, um, so everything is fine still. If I save that now and I go to here, uh, click count label, I can find it and then I can just like say, hey, give me the text property and so on and so on, right? Well, that's what it does. Uh, then uh, what I am going to do is set an automation ID. So automation ID, that's for the second part of um, what we're going to be doing, uh, that will allow my test framework to find this component and interact with it. You can just find it by a property, but that is kind of the, uh, the, the default nice uh, um, property to, to surface. So then uh, we're going to put some text and the text is going to be um, no clicks yet, maybe something like that. And uh, let's speed type no clicks yet. Uh, and then uh, vertical options are going to be center and expand. And finally, horizontal horizontal options are going to be center. All right, so we've got a label, it's all nice. Uh, we don't need to have the close tag, so I simply need to close it in line, and we're happy, and uh, no clicks yet, right? And if I wanted to make a label, uh, if I wanted to have some background, right? Uh, background color equals beautiful salmon, because everybody likes salmon, here we go. I've got some beautiful uh, salmon. And if I want to have a height a request of 100, I can do that. Yeah, and if I want to have a width, width, I'm making a width request. Uh, the reason why we call it request is because Xamarin forms, you know, it's nested elements, right? You have a container that does cat type layout that will have maybe a grid that will have something else that will contain a label. The label will have some other like tick boxes or whatever. Uh, and ultimately, it might not be able to give you the uh, space you want, but you can um, request for it to give you the best you can, right? So um, let's add ah, new. I've got a new comment. Yes, we can hear. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so with, uh, okay, hello. Request, let's make it like nice and box-like. Oh, uh, let's make it bigger, 200. And the font, we can make a font, uh, font size. Let's make it uh, uh, large, yeah. Yeah, it's big and uh, yeah. Okay, it doesn't look too pretty, but uh, who cares, right? Uh, that's that's fine. And okay, let's let's add some uh, uh, padding, which is ten. Okay. okay, let's make a padding of uh, forty. 
Ah, no, it's too much. 20 is good. Yay, excellent. It still looks horrible, but that's nice. Right, then we're going to add a button. Button. A button. And our button will have the following. Uh, the button will have the following. It's going to have, let me just like, uh, so let's put also some padding on this one. Padding equal 10. Uh, then uh, let's put a margin, uh, margin maybe 100. Yeah, sounds good. Margin 100, and then automation ID, I like the other one, uh, count button. It's a bit like a king button or master button. And then we, and actually we don't need to give it an, um, we're not going to address it directly, we're simply going to use an event handler for this one. So uh, background color, color, it's going to be like the default uh, uh, disk. Beast and salmon is just like the best, the best you can always do. Uh, and then we're going to have some text, text, uh, which is going to be click, uh, click me maybe, uh, click me. Uh, and then uh, text color is going to be uh, black because, uh, or, or blue, blue on this, let's have a look what it looks like for now. Oh, look at that, it's horrendous, but it's, it's okay, it's okay. So, uh, click me, uh, font size, font size, you know what, let's make it just like a massive as well, like uh, header, so that should be like too much. Wow, that's big, let's, uh, let's, let's make it uh, so a uh, margin uh, with request 200. Doesn't cut it. 400. That's not going to work. Uh, you know what? Let's make it maybe uh, large as well. Large. Yeah. That looks less horrendous. And uh, finally, uh, once the button is clicked, we're going to create a method uh, button on click. So, again, that is creating something in the code behind. It is not something that I would do. I like to uh, use the commands and the viewable thing that we saw a bit before, but uh, for the sake of uh, simplicity, let's uh, make it simple. So, so far we've got a button and uh, when you click it, it does uh, absolutely nothing and that's great. Um, so what we want to do is maybe put uh, here a simple integer, private uh, int, uh, which is going to be count equal uh, one. Yep, I like to do my underscores. Uh, here it's like that because we're running the application, so it's not so happy. It's saying, oh no, uh, that is uh, change made in the, on whatever will not be applied because I don't have a hot reload, uh, hot uh, restart enabled. So let me stop that and the green will go away. Uh, and then I am going to implement what we want to do, which is um, the click count label dot text the text uh, equal, um, you know what, let's do it. Oh. So when I put a dollar here, that means that I can then put some code in between, right? So I'm going to demonstrate if you're not familiar with C sharp. Uh, no. So I can do that, right? So that will give me the value of count. Uh, if I remove this thing, it will twist it, print it as a string that says, hey, uh, that's a variable, uh, which is that guy there, and it's equal to one. Uh, and we say what clicked, see, clicked uh, whatever times maybe, and times, and uh, yep. And then we leave it uh, at that for now. So now if we restart our position, It should be working. And then it's going to get fun. So basic example inform application, and then we will go to the rest. Uh, building, we can see it's building. It's uploading to my real device, right? I'm not playing in the simulator, that's the real stuff. Real device, yeah. Up, launching the application. And now, if I click somewhere on my beautiful BISC button, that will go there, and that is equal to one, and then next thing we know, it is going to be equal to 
two excellent and that should here we go click one times that is true and then if i do it again two times three times and so on and so on right okay so far so good excellent so now i want to oh that's a, that's a shame go like this but now what i want to do is just to test that what we uh, did is actually correct so now and my good old uh, company, because uh, we uh, I'd like to churn some open source library from time to time. Let me go to um, uh, new get uh, exam arenas. Uh, let's go there. Uh, if we go to uh, package, no, we want to. Okay, owners. So we've got a few libraries. This one's pretty popular. That is to uh, cross-platform uh, app config reader for Xamarin. But what, uh, what we put something recently on a um, couple of libraries. This is Xamarin as end-to-end. Uh, that was six days ago, really. Uh, and this is what we're going to be using. That allows you to um, use Cucumber to perform some UI tests on App Center. That, that sounds cryptic, but you'll see what it is. But we've got also something for unit tests on Xamarin to do some unit tests on Bla Blazor uh, and also to do some on the web. So on the web, on Blazor, that is going to be using, um, sorry, the end-to-end -end for Blazor will be using uh, Cypress. So what I did there is just, uh, I've got a project here, which is a simple test project. And I added a reference to uh, the examiner's end-to-end. -end. So it's not a NuGet here, it's just the actual library, but that's what the NuGet, uh, NuGet has. And what it does, ultimately behind the scene, it just talks to the UI library and provides a lot of, um, of um, uh, the steps that would be common so you don't have to write any code to do your unit testing. So forget about that bit. Bear in mind that we've got like this page here and we want to be able to make sure that when we click on the button, um, the um, label, um, is updated, say that you click this label once or twice and, and all that. So I already went ahead and created a um, feature for that, uh, which is uh, how we write our, um, our uh, UI test here. And what I will do is just add uh, some uh, a test for it without a single line of code. Uh, so let's create a scenario. And my scenario is going to be uh, tapping, we want to be tapping three times on the button, right? Tapping, tapping, tapping. Let me make it even bigger so everybody can see that I tap three times on the button. So uh, so we start by given, given I am, oh, we go. it finds it for me, IntelliSense, on the main page. So given I am on main page, so remember, um, I said that we can find page by, by title. Uh, and this is, if you go to what, uh, how it's done, so definition, what we're saying is say, hey, Xamarin form UI screen, uh, we want to uh, make sure that uh, we have a Windows that uh, is marked with a piece of text uh, like that. And the piece of text is what we finish. There are a lot of things happening on the um, behind the scene, but ultimately, you as a uh, developer, only thing you need to do is given I am on the main page, and what it validates again is ba -ba -da -ba -da. Uh, we go to main page. Here we go. Title is main page, so it's going to say, "Hey, I want to go here." Oh, Google is is kicking in. Stop Google. Stop bad Google. Bad Google. Go away. I'm with Microsoft right now. So um, we have this uh, main page there, right? So we say, hey, given I am on the main page, it's going to validate that this is where I am. And then I can uh, go like, uh, um, and, 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 I can, I can, hello, IntelliSense, and I can, see, uh, I can see, uh, just I can see, and I can see, go to click count test. So what is go to click count test? That is the automation idea I was talking about. So here, again, if you go on the main page, automation ID, go to click count test. So what it will say, say, hey, I can see a button that is named that. Or we can just mark by test and say, uh, get that, that part. But it's a bit safer to do so. So I can see that part of text, yep. Uh, and when I tap, when I tap 
one night tap uh, on one night tap on um, uh, go to click on test which is the send button right that has been uh, that is uh, that is on the main page when I uh, click sorry on on that button then what do we want to do so then we want to say that we navigate to the click on page then I am on not main page I want to be click count and just to make sure I've got the right stuff we've got the page and this is what it should be click count page and then what we want to do and I'm going to accelerate uh, a bit because it's going to take some time I'm going to say when I tap on the count so on the click count page and I can see a count button remember this is a button we named and we put um, a uh, automation ID didn't we uh, click on page I click on page automation ID count button yep and then we say that uh, when I tap on that thing it will tap on it and then it uh, we want to see clicks one time uh, with an S okay that's a typo but doesn't matter if we go back here say click whatever times right this is what we want to do and then uh, we click it again, it's going to be two times, three times, and all that. All right, how about we run that test and see how it goes. So what it will do, it will do, uh, it will take the application, find it, run it, and run the test that we performed. And uh, here we can see in the background say, hey, we are signing the um, application with a key store because so we're doing that on Android because it's a bit simpler to do now. And then it's going to upload it to my device and then we'll be able to see the steps running. Hopefully, if my demo goes well. It's, it's still performing the action. Go for it. It is still here we go. That has been launched, and then we'll be able to see the steps down here. So, waiting for element main page. Now Google click count test. It's going to click. See it clicked. And I'm not touching anything, right? So no clicks yet. It's a waiting for the element click count. Uh, click on the button. It's clicking on it. One time and validating that the text is correct. It's taking some screenshots as well. Um, we, we, which I will be able to demonstrate to and let's go into that the third time please and we should be off excellent done the test is successful and we can see uh, that oh that's, that's a bit too big but that is a result let me put that so it says hey um, it's all the thing we wanted to do right so uh, waiting for an element main page and say yep I found something called main page and then I'm waiting for an element called that and then I click on it and so on and so on so ultimately what happened here is by um, using some very simple uh, human readable language we can validate that our stuff is working and there is no code it is just given I am on the main page and I can see a button whatever when I tap on that button then I am on this page it's just like super Super straightforward. So here I've been running um, that just locally, but uh, well, it can run, and, and that's running on my device. What if I want to uh, run it on iOS, and I want to run it in just like a, a Google Nexus, uh, no, uh, a Google uh, whatever they're called, Pixel, or, or a Nexus, or a, uh, um, a Samsung with a various operating system? Well, I can do that. I can run a command to do just that. Before we do that, though, I am going just to. Um, um, have a look at what um, App Center looks like so we know what are the next steps. So, App Center is right here. You should be able to see that. Let me expand. So, this is App Center. Let me uh, check. So, uh, what we can uh, do ultimately is uh, create. Well, now that's going to be complicated. I'm going to use one that I uh, created beforehand, but uh, which is the. Let me get the ID for it. Um, ba -ba -dum -ba -dum. That's going to be only one sec. So we want a four one two D four one two D. So that's going to be one two D. This one maybe. Nope. Uh, and to Android, so maybe examiners. 
for yes that's that's the one that's the one excellent so uh, that is app center it is nice and cool so what it says first of all hey um what App Center allows you to do is just to uh, build application. I think that Shaminda demonstrated it um, a bit earlier. We can test the application, which is um, by doing what I've been doing locally, but on a, a farm of um, mobile devices. Then you can uh, distribute it to your uh, team uh, for testing. You can distribute it to the app stores, and then we can check the diagnostics, which is when something goes wrong and we know about it, and then analytics, once you, uh, when you want to put some information, so um, uh, you know when a user is using this button or this screen more often uh, than not. All right. So um, the first thing to do is just to add uh, some information to our applications, so all this magic can happen. Not not the build, but for this for distribution, diagnostic, and analytics, you need to have uh, that part. So you know what? I'm going to copy that part. Uh, look at Xamarin form, so it's a bit more, and it's uh, app center start whatever analytics crashes uh, and so on. I am going to take all that part and uh, put it at the right place, which is on the app.xaml.c-sharp, uh, and that uh, should be just, uh, let's have a look what they say, uh, after just following the on start method. Uh, here we go, on start, we got all this. So app center start, we got our app secret, which is what they say here. And then uh, we just are going to deploy to Android today. We want the analytics, we want the crash hints, and what I want as well is distribute. So why on earth would I add something called distribute to, um, to all that jazz? And I'm going to tell you what, by adding this piece here, that means that whenever your uh, application um, has an update, and let's say that you've been doing some breaking change on your backend, that means that if you were to release your application and all the users doesn't upgrade, that will break. The application will not be uh, stable anymore. So by adding that part, that allows you to do the following. Wait for it. So, I, so let's say that I want to distribute some application, which is just like something I distributed a bit earlier. I can go there and I can uh, put whatever text I want, click next. I want to distribute it to my collaborators. Next, mandatory update. So mandatory update is working with distribute uh, and what it means that when this application is published and a user will try to launch their current version, um, a pop-up will show up say, sorry, you need to update to the latest version and they won't uh, let the user add that. So it's really nice to have uh, because it's something less you have to manage and it's kind of really, really well made. So um, that's, yeah, if, if you've been in this situation, you understand how useful this feature is. So I added that part there. What else can I add that can be useful? Well, you know what? I can I can tell App Center, you know what? I want to uh, check that I am uh, a specific user. So App Center dot uh, set user ID. So let's say that here I logged in somehow and I want to say, um, Ben, uh, you want to know what, um, which user are currently um, um, using the application? Well, you can do that by uh, telling App Center set user ID and then uh, whenever you've got some analytics, you will be able to know that this is for this specific user. Obviously here, yeah, this is hard coded for demo purpose and you probably don't want to have some um, sensitive information, but you can definitely use a user ID, like a GUID, that would be uh, traditionally um, how you authenticate a user, you'll get a GUID back as an ID and you'll uh, be able to put that there. I'm going to add a couple of more things in order to demonstrate uh, this crash and the uh, analytics we're talking about, right? I am going to go to another page, which is basically, let me go back here, uh, entry to label, that page. So in order just to uh, I want to be able to generate some errors and I want to be able to regenerate some crashes. So I already um, went ahead because the time is rare. Uh, KU, I'm going to increment all that and walk you through the code of what I added here. So we'll say that whenever the text that we put there is error, 
I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to add like a bunch of properties, and then I'm going to tell App Center to track, uh, to add an error, which is nice, then exception, and you can pass some properties. Obviously, this is made up, but let's say you've got a real crash, you want to um, be able just to uh, funnel it up to uh, your um, uh, cra crash reporting. And also, that is interesting. So, also, I want to have a proper crash. So, that is just saying that I've got an error, it is handled, and I want to, um, to, to send it to App Center so we can have a look at it. Here, uh, we are just trying to make the application crash. And what better way to make an application crash by uh, doing a good division by zero? Why I am not doing a division by zero such as five divided by zero? because uh, um, the net doesn't let you do that anymore. It's going to say, sorry, uh, division by zero, you can't do that. Um, so you're not allowed to do it altogether. Uh, so you need to uh, go uh, and take a walk around. And they're still going to tell you that is not really, really correct. Division by zero, at least in one execution path, but uh, I, I still be able to do it. So I just get that bit on. Uh, and then I'll be able to um, to uh, well get running. I'm going to run the application and then uh, try to make the application crash. And let's have a look what it looks like on App Center. Up in the meantime, uh, what I will prepare is uh, uploading uh, those tests to App Center. Oh, no, I need to wait for this execution to be done in order to package the application to be able to send it to App Center. It is straightforward, but a couple of steps that are involved. So again, the application will be running. Uh, I just wanted to maybe put a quick breakpoint there. So here on start was uh, telling uh, App Center, hey, uh, please, Please uh, set up all that jazz and then set the user ID to me. So now uh, the user ID tells you a bunch of information. Uh, up, 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 have I got my user ID here? Secrets, nope, nope. Uh, hmm. Oh, okay, cool. Well, we're on Android, and, and that's great. Uh, now uh, I did a bit of code there. Let's uh, make a break point at a breakpoint, and let's continue the application. Execution. Now I'm going to go to entry to label. Excellent. Text to label. Uh, what I want to do is, uh, if I put something, whatever, click here to a change, that is not going to go there, and that is simply going to uh, show the text there, right, as as uh, as required. Excellent. Then we're going to try to create an error by typing error. Error is going to go here, click. Uh, what's happening here? Ah, yes, uh, oh, I, I remove my breakpoint, that's why. Uh, up, and that again will just uh, send some exception with my properties to App Center. And finally, I'm going to crash the application by a oh, sorry. crash, click here. And that should be able to divide by zero. And that's going to be hand handled. Here we go. And that is going to crash my application. Very good. Very happy about it. Finally, before we deploy, I want to add some analytics. So here, uh, every time we click on this label, uh, on, on the button, you know, and say, hey, you counted X times, I want to say, hey, I've sent analytics, I want to track this event, and we can say button clicked X times. Um, and we'll know that it is my user that is logged because um, that's that's uh, already set on the, um, on the ID. So now, what I need to do, I will need to build uh, do that. This whole application, uh, which is at Android. I'm going to build it. And then I am going to archive it, and then we're going to send it to App Center. Um, in order to waste not much time, I'm going to go quickly to uh, these diagnostics, and we should already see some errors there. There we go. One minute ago, we can see that we've got this Ben exception, 
And uh, if we look at the report, it was on my Nexus 6P. That is correct. That is absolutely now. Um, and, and yeah, let's have a look. Sorry, let's go back again. Um, yep. So I've got the report, we've got, uh, okay. Uh, and then we can have a look at the analytics because I, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, diagnostics, um, crashes. I got my crashes, we can see, oh, well, that's, uh, it takes maybe a bit longer to come, but um, that's the same thing, right? It just said that we tried to uh, divide by zero and that is just there all the same. Which is kind of nice. Uh, all right, so that has been built. So what I'm going to do now is go here and tell, hey, please archive my um, Android application so I can package it and uh, push it to the relevant place. All right, um, okay, I've got it. Now I'm going to go to open my folder, which um, shows me this is the APK. So you say, oh, 78 meg is big. We didn't do any linking here. Um, linking allows you to uh, tell the compiler, hey, uh, please don't use any stuff you don't need. And that includes your own source code. That includes Xamarin own libraries and .NET own libraries or any NuGet packages or references that you'll have. Uh, and ultimately, you can get, well, first of all, that is just like for multi multiple um, Android platforms. Uh, so like the, if you will install it, be literally a third of that. Secondly, if you link uh, your application for this kind uh, of, um, of, of setup here, that would be uh, below 10 megs, maybe five. So you need to do a bit of linking, but that's kind of straightforward to do. Uh, not uh, part of the topic of today because I'm kind of overrunning in two minutes uh, and I'd like to finish um, this thing. But we, we, we're mostly uh, going to the end. So now, what I need to do is just to, uh, let's have a look. So uh, I put it on the wrong one. Um, app. Up, up. So uh, I, I will be running a command and that's going to take a long time. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, going to, I'm sorry, to not do that so we can uh, keep on time. But ultimately what you do, you just uh, do okay, the following. Let me, let me show you. Here, uh, we've got a uh, test series, right? Uh, we can just make a new test on, on our application. Um, then uh, we can say, hey, let's look for devices. What devices we want? And uh, that is on Android. We want to use a uh, Galaxy, something, something popular, 10 plus, how many devices we've got? They've got 10 devices available here. Okay, definitely cool. I'm going to take the Samsung Galaxy S10 and uh, maybe a Pixel. Let's have a look at the Pixel. And the Google Pixel 10. Uh, let's have a look. So I'm looking here to see how many devices I've got uh, available. Those are real devices, by the way, right? So I want to have this Google Pixel and uh, oh, Google Pixel 4, how many have I got? 10, ah, even better. Okay, that. And you can just add as much devices as you want, right? So, um, yep, I've got two devices here. And I'm, uh, I test series, create a new test, which is going to be a new test, uh, create. And that is going to be on Xamarin UI test. Next. So now it just tells me, hey, in order to do that, please uh, do all this shenanigans, which is copy uh, this command line and and, uh, and and go for it. So let's let's try to do that. Maybe we've got a bit of time. Well, well, well let's say that I copy all this thing there, and then uh, I serve that into my command prompt. Uh, my command prompt, which is here, uh, that we look a bit like this. It will start. Um, it will start going around. Oh, okay, no, it's, it's not that. Okay, uh, that will be, okay, give me a sec. Well, ultimately that will be running and uploading your package and running some tests, which will take you a while because we're approaching the end of the conversation. Uh, I will just go uh, show you how it actually looks like. Uh, and let's go to another one. Um, da -da -da. Uh, there we know, Android, I should have some test. Here we go. 
So we're looking, so this is our button, uh, button count feature, uh, and this is what it will be looking like. So um, this is, remember, uh, typing on the, three times on the button, go to clean count, test invisible, and then I tap on the button, then uh, the count button is visible, and when I tap on the button again, you click one time on the button, and then so on and so on, and up to three times, and the test uh, will pass. So. Uh, uh, using the pipeline that Shaminda demonstrated to you a bit earlier, you can automate that part, which makes that uh, in one hand you you can have your QA um, uh, engineers or your developers writing those tests. Again, you don't need to use any code. You can if you want. If you want to use some code, that is going to be looking more like that part, which looks indeed uh, by itself like uh, uh, yeah. But well, yeah, the, the, the ultimate is just talking to uh, to the underlying UI test um, uh, framework, but uh, that is going to be testing your application as uh, from a user point of view. So it will probably don't want to have like a lot of UI tests because they are pretty costly in terms of time, uh, the time of execution because it is real time uh, as opposed to unit tests, but. And the cool part um, that, that you might want to have like some long end-to-end -end ones where you don't have to reset the application all the time. That just covers most of your feature or just like for each long feature, just like make one of those tests and, and then you'll be sure that across different form factor of device operating system, um, things work. Otherwise, you'll get an error that will uh, tell you, no, it is not working, which is which is great. Uh, let's go like, super quickly to finish on the uh, analytics. Um, on the analytics and not this one, let's go to a um, that analytics. That um, gives you for free um, a view of the usage of your application by doing nothing. Yeah, uh, simply saying, here we go. I've got that many active users, and monthly they're going up and down. Um, daily session per user, the session duration, the top devices, where in the world they are, uh, and uh, the active user per version, and so on. And then you can also have some events. Uh, remember when I just well, it's we didn't upload it, but whenever you click on the button, I just added an event that so will be showing here. Um, maybe I can find it if I go to the apps tab. Uh, GAB. No, that's not going to be there. And maybe I'm going to look at it. Analytics. Events. No, it, it won't be there. But yes, th th this is what it will be showing up. I think I think that concludes um, my session. Uh, I know it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's go back one step. I forgot to show you something. That's that's the beauty of live unscripted demos. Um, so we've seen the bu building. I mean that probably mentioned that a bit earlier, where you simply uh, plug into your repository, and then you can just like uh, you know. Um, Go or go and uh, tie up tie up your application to um, to your repository, and then every time some code is committed, let's say, it will build the application uh, for you. Um, what is cool is application can be distributed. Uh, let me go back to uh, some uh, magic Android app. So um, you've got uh, your application that has been built, and then you can say, right, I want to distribute it to um, to uh, this group, super testers. Um, and, and then you'll be able just like to send it to them. That will just end up in uh, their uh, mailbox. Um, uh, notification that will look like, let me get you a view of that thing. Um, mailbox, that should be there. So you'll be uh, receiving an application, uh, so uh, an email along this line. Um, that would tell you, hey, a new version of whatever is available. That's why iOS is not, not going to work. We want Android, really. Um, iOS, 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 iOS. Can I have some Android? Excellent. So you go here, you click on your button. It goes to App Center. Not both for iOS and Android. And then you simply need to download the application. And then once it's finished to download, it's, uh, it's there for you to use. Very simple. So that is how you'll be able to manage your your uh, testing um, with App Center. You can also, so um, 
in order to ma manage your tester, it's very simple. You just uh, uh, create some groups, like here you go, super tester, and then you can add some tester. Uh, you just simply add some email, like bob at bob.com, uh, and you can add as many as you want. And then uh, once you want to release your application to your tester, pick the group you want, and uh, all your tester will be notified and uh, will be able to test the application delivered straight to their um, mailbox. And finally, you can configure a Google Play and the iTunes Comedy Portal in order to be able to release um, to um, your application straight into the source. You need your certificates and your keys to do that, but you can do it from App Center. Now I am truly done. Any questions? The questions are here, by the way. I believe there are no questions at all. Uh, well, if you have any question, you can contact me uh, at this email address, ben at um, I'm just adding that to check. Ben at xamariners.com. Our website is xamariners.com. Uh, yep, just like, feel free to drop me a line if you've got uh, any queries. Um, I hope that uh, I demonstrated that Xamarin is a pretty powerful uh, tool for building a native application or even web application, uh, and that it works pretty well with GitHub, uh, with App Center, in order just to test, to build, distribute, and um, look at the diagnostic and analytics, uh, analytics of your applications. All right. If that's all, then um, well, we'll call it today. Again, if you've got any queries, uh, feel free to uh, ping me again at benexaminers.com, uh, which is on the uh, live and QA uh, live event QA chat, which you should all be able to have a look at. But uh, yep, let's have a look. Oh, I think that. Uh, We'll be good to go. Well, thank you very much again uh, for staying uh, this afternoon with us. Um, that was, I, I hope it was useful and uh, I wish you a good um, end of week, really, which kind of barely started. <laughs> Have a good day. Thank you. Bye.